Now in this video I want to talk about types of reasoning in healthcare. So this is a bit different to the normal videos we're making. This one's more about what we could call epistemology. And it sounds a bit philosophical and abstract, but you'll see it's got some really important uh, practical applications. Epistemology really means the, the study of knowledge and how do we know things. And what I want to talk about here are the three main types of reasoning in this video. And the three main types of reasoning we have are deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning and adductive reasoning. So deductive, inductive, adductive are the three types of reasoning that you are using mostly when you're in clinical practice and when you're understanding the basis of practice as well. So let's think about those in order. First of all, let's think about deductive reasoning. Now in deductive reasoning, we take a top down approach. So in deductive reasoning, there are certain things that we know. These can be described as axioms. Something is axiomatic if we take it as true. So an axiom is something we take as true. And we can then deductively reason from that by going from these axioms down the way. Another way of looking at it is we can take general principles and if something is generally true, it is likely or certainly true, depending on how, we, how certain we are from our starting points, how certain we are of the axioms. If we're certain of the axioms, then the outcome that we deduce is certainly true. So, for example, um, all humans need oxygen. My patient Joan is a patient. My patient Joan is a human, rather. So we know that all humans need oxygen. We know that Joan, my patient today, is a human. And we know these true that these things are certainly true. I know for a fact that all humans need oxygen. That is an axiom of physiology. All humans need oxygen. And I know for a fact that Joan, my patient, is human. So I know that all humans need oxygen. Joan is a human. Therefore, Joan needs oxygen. There is no question about that. It is necessarily true based on the axioms or these principles that we started off with. It is necessarily true. And that's important because that's going to inform my practice. That means I don't want Joan's oxygen saturations to drop below certain levels. And I'm going to take measures to facilitate adequate oxygenation of Joan's tissues. So we're reasoning down from general principles to specific instances. And we also do this in research. So we might say, well, this is true of 10,000 people in this study, that they benefited from aspirin after a myocardial infarction. And if it's true for 10,000 people, actually, I think the initial international study of infarct survival research was based on 36,000 patients. But if it's true for this thousands of patients, then it's very likely to be true for the individual patient as well. So we're reasoning from theory down the way. We're taking established theory. So if it's true for 10,000 patients, it's likely to be true for the individual patient. So we can take it from research. And this is why we learn about basic physiology and pathophysiology. This is why it's necessary to learn these axioms. So we need to know that pH must be finely controlled. We need to know that humans need water. We need to know that humans need nutrition. And all of these things are the axioms that we can base our reasoning on. And then we can make logical deductions about our care from, from these axioms. So it's a top-down reasoning. We are taking what is generally true and applying that to the individual. And this is a highly valid way of reasoning, a highly valid way of thinking. Now, another way of thinking is inductive reasoning. Now, inductive reasoning is where we take something that is true in the specific instance and we extrapolate that to the general, to be generally true. And I think you can probably already see that this is uh, likely to be a less valid way of thinking. So the deductive reasoning is, is highly valid if we do it right. The inductive is open to misinterpretation. So, you know, I was talking to my next door neighbour the other day, Alice, and I said I had a cough 
and Alice said, oh, did you have a cough, John? You know, Albert had a cough. And when Albert had a cough, the doctor gave him the red pills. And you know what? It was better in two or three days. What you need is the red pills. Now, do you see what's happened there? Because the red pills work for uh, Bert, then Alice thinks that these red pills are going to work for everyone. But of course, that's not true. <laughs> they worked in a specific instance, but they may not work in the general. That is inductive reasoning. It's bottom up. It's the opposite of the deductive. So because the red pills work for one person's cough doesn't mean to say they're going to work for my cough. It is intrinsically irrational to extrapolate general principles from specific instances. But it is logical to take the specific from the general. So the deductive is logical, is likely to be valid. The inductive is, is a less valid form of reasoning. Because it works for one person does not necessarily mean it works for the other. And this can be quite dangerous. So um, someone might say, well, you know, I had pneumonia and uh, I took a homeopathic treatment and you know what? I got better. Well, well, I'm delighted for you if you got better. But can you see the danger there? This treatment worked for me. This treatment was homeopathic. I had pneumonia. Therefore, if you have pneumonia, it will also work for you. Wrong. Dangerously wrong. So inductive reasoning can be dangerously wrong. Just because it's true in the individual does not mean it's necessarily true in the general. So we are not at liberty to apply it to all of our patients. But this doesn't mean to say that inductive reasoning is useless. So that's by no means true. It's often very useful. So we can take some specific instances and think, oh, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if I can use this to generate a hypothesis I could postulate a hypothesis based on these individual instances. And that, that's interesting. Could, could, could this be true? Can we generate a new hypothesis here? And a hypothesis, of course, is a testable statement, something that we can test. So inductive reasoning can be good for generating a, a hypothesis, which can then be tested to generate a new law or a new principle, which can become an axiom from which deductive reasoning can then flow and lead to valid conclusions. So I'm not saying inductive reasoning is useless, it's useful for research, it's useful for developing new knowledge as part of a, a thought process, but it's dangerous in many aspects of clinical practice. So that's a deductive, inductive. The third form we mentioned was adductive. Now, adductive reasoning actually is what we do pretty well all the time at work. So doctors use adductive reasoning, detectives use adductive reasoning. And what happens in adductive reasoning is that several data points are taken, some information is taken. And from that, we work out the most likely explanation, the most probable explanation for what we're seeing. So a patient comes in to me and they're tachypneic, they're breathing rapidly, they're tachycardic, their heart is beating fast, and they are pyrexial, they have a high body temperature of 39 degrees centigrade. And they're also having extreme difficulty breathing. They are very dyspneic and they are very distressed, very difficult for them to breathe. Now that may indicate that that patient has pneumonia. It's a logical inference from what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna kind of run with that uh, working diagnosis. We often talk about a working diagnosis and I'm gonna order up more tests to confirm whether this working diagnosis is correct. So I'm going to order a chest x-ray and see if I can see loba or diffuse consolidation that might indicate loba or bronchopneumonia. I'm going to order blood tests to see if this patient has an increase in white blood cells. I'm going to order blood tests to see if this patient's got an increase in, in C-reactive protein. And all these things will aid my diagnosis. They're still data points. I still don't have absolute certainty of my diagnosis, but as I collect more data points, a particular diagnosis becomes more probable. Not absolute, but it becomes more probable. So this adductive reasoning is saying, well, this is what we know. Um, combining this with my previous knowledge, with my understanding of axioms and with my understanding of research, all these features here make this the most probable outcome. Uh, the most probable um, working hypothesis, if you like. Now that is amenable to modification as more data comes in, but adductive reasoning is something which is most probable 
based on the limited data that we always have because we never have complete data. Even when you do a post-mortem, you've never got really complete data. We're always making uh, adductive assumptions to some extent. And that's one very good reason to practice humbly in all aspects of healthcare. So think about that. Am I reasoning uh, deductively? Good. Am I reasoning, reasoning inductively? Be careful. Or am I reasoning adductively? That's fine, but be humble because it may change as more data points come into our realm of consciousness.